the UMass president, Martin Mean, is our guest this morning. Let's go on the record. College campuses still finding their feet in a post-pandemic world. The challenges and the opportunities for the UMass system in a time of transition. Marty Mean is here. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR, everyone. I'm Ed Harding, along with News Center 5's political reporter, Sharman Sakedi. It's great to have you with this morning. We're pleased, as you can see, to have UMass President Marty Meehan with us in the chair this morning. He has served as the president of the UMass system since 2015. Before that, he was chancellor of UMass Lowell. He's a native of Lowell, represented the city in Congress from 93 to 07. He holds degrees from UMass Lowell and Suffolk University. You know, it's it's, it's, it's funny, haha. I mean, you're, you're not Marty me and you're Marty me. And that, that's, so, Marty, it's great to have you with us. <laughs> that's what John McCain used to always call yeah, Maddie. Yeah, Maddie, how are you? How are you? How Thanks are you? for being here. Well, let's start with free community college. That is something that is getting a big push on Beacon Hill, both from Governor Maura Healy and also Senate President Karen Spilko. What do you think about that? Uh, I'm a big supporter of community colleges. Uh, there, uh, We take a lot of the transfer of students. Uh, I like the governor's proposal, focusing on uh, folks 25 years and, and older. You know, we have a million people in Massachusetts who have some college uh, uh, credit, but haven't got an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. We need to deal with that. There are 23 million uh, nationwide. Uh, I would say that uh, I like the governor's proposal. Uh, I really think the federal government, if they could double the Pell Grant, uh, just double that. Mm -hmm. We'd have free community college uh, throughout the country. Um, I do think it's important, though. But uh, it's not as easy as just doubling that, is it? I mean, that, that, that's a lot of money. Uh, it is a lot of money, but it makes sense to, to provide the access for people who are in need. It, it would right now the limit is six thousand five hundred. It would go to just under thirteen thousand. It would mean f not only free uh, community college, but also there are some kids, particularly kids that grow up in urban areas, Lowell, Lawrence, uh, Fall River, New Bedford. If they can get into UMass into a computer science program, an engineering program, uh, a nursing program. Well, they shouldn't go to community college. They should come to UMass, and we should provide them with the financial aid that they need to do that. So Why community you, college is not necessarily right for everyone mm -hmm. in the situation. Why do you like the 25 and older? Why an age limit there? Uh, it's not so much that it's an age limit. It's that there's a real need because folks that are in the workforce that don't have a degree, the data is overwhelming that if you have an associate's degree during the course of a lifetime, you're going to make a half a million dollars more. If you have a bachelor's degree, you're going to even make, uh, more and if you have a master's degree you're going to make them in a career a million dollars more than someone who has a uh, associate's degree so I think the the goal is to get every part of the system to get it working well so it's more affordable you, 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 you've called on the governor and the legislature to provide more financial aid for students have you spoken directly to Governor Healy about that sure I've, I've talked to her yeah. throughout the campaign yeah. and I uh, I had uh, the new secretary of education I had lunch with uh, him this past week so yeah it's an uh, advocacy is part of what you do uh, in and they you know the legislature they have some tough decisions to make I think to the extent that this extra money goes in it should go to aid for students and financial aid is, is important important. And I, just for the record, I, we increased by $28 million need-based financial aid at UMass mm -hmm. last year. In the last decade, we put $180 million into financial aid. Uh, in 2023, we will, uh, we've committed to $373 million in financial aid. If the state could help meet a part of that, we could get to more people. What, was she receptive when you talked to her about it? Yeah, what, she's, what, very her supportive. she's very supportive of public higher education mm -hmm. uh, in Massachusetts, and I think she wants to roll up her sleeves. And Tim, Gris Tim Driscoll, the same thing. So I think that they'll be responsive. It's just a matter of working with the legislature and finding out what the right model is. But I, I do think it's important that there are some students that actually should come to UMass and major in engineering or computer science right from the get-go. But we need to do a better job of getting financial aid to students. Well, you talk about financial aid. Do you think the state legislature has given you short shrift on that? Um, I think that if you look at the amount of money that comes from the state versus the amount of money that we put in, when I say UMass, that means if we increase tuition, uh, 20 to 30 percent of it we put into need-based financial aid so that we'll still be accessible and affordable to those uh, who, who, who who need that financial aid. I think the Commonwealth, I think most legislators would agree the Commonwealth could do more. Statistically, uh, it hasn't gone up at the at, at the rate that probably we would like. But 
we're going to work with the legislature and the governor to try to determine what are the best investments that ought to ought to be made. Community college is a is a good investment from my perspective, um, but we, we want to make sure every sector of public higher education that has access to it. All right, let's talk about your uh, flagship campus over at UMass Amherst. You need a new chancellor uh, for that campus. For um, now, post COVID, there's been a lot of turnover in university leadership all over the country. Are you confident you can find the right person by the end of the spring semester? I am. But first of all, let me ch say the Chancellor Subhaswamy, who's been there at 10 years, has done an incredible job. He's a great uh, academic leader. He's a great human being. And uh, by any metric you would evaluate our fla flagship campus, it's on an upward trajectory. And because of that, Chairman, the, the, the pool of candidates is better than it would have been because UMass Amherst is in a different place than it was 10 years ago. Uh, so I've looked at the pool. I'm, uh, so I'm recruiting people. We have a big pool people. of candidates we right now? We have a big pool, but it's a high quality pool. So um, I'm hopeful and confident that we're going to be able to get uh, a person who, who will hit the ground running. How and, soon? Uh, we hope to have somebody appointed, uh, at least announced by uh, April, and someone hopefully that would start in July uh, or potentially August. But, but it, look, that, that's one of the best, I, I think it's probably the best job in the UMass system. It's a great job uh, to run the Amherst campus, and I'm confident we have a good pool, and uh, we're, gonna, we're working hard right now to get the best possible let, let, Let's talk about the students, because you have seen success with a pilot program with, with Massachusetts high school students where they take college-level courses. Is that fair to say? Yeah, For full early credit, college. right? Early college is really important for two reasons. Uh, and we have a pilot program going at UMass Stop at the UMass Law. We have over, over 500 uh, uh, students in high school who are going to start earning college credit. It's important, number one, because uh, students can save money. We would like to... Uh, right, it doesn't cost any money. Right, it doesn't yeah. co cost a student any money. We've right. gotten some state money for it, some private grant money. But, but students, uh, in, particularly in our gateway cities, we need to show them that college is practical and attainable for them. So it's a great opportunity to give students confidence in high school. The second part of it is, if we can get to 30 credits in high school, that would be a whole year that they'd get college credit, they could come to UMass and only pay for three years of UMass rather than four years. So well, it, it actually can save and, money. And, and it's an incentive also to get the student to go to UMass, right? It, so it's, it's, it's a double-edged. It, it, it is. It is. But I think the most important part of it is we need to get more uh, students, particularly from disadvantaged backgrounds, to realize they can do college. They can be successful at college. And you can do that. We have UMass professors who are working with, uh, with uh, the high schools. And it's, it has enormous potential. I know that uh, Governor Healy is a big supporter of it. Uh, do the credits work for other colleges? Yes, it, they do. They you do. Can, one for one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you does, can transfer it to most Does it depend on college. the college, or, or does it work well, for Well, it's always up to the, 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 the faculty the, at a particular yeah. college, sure, but sure. They're, they're transferable. As a matter of fact, when I first got to UMass Lowell, what uh, now is a few years ago, um, uh, one of the things I worked on is making for better seamless transfer of college credits from community college to, uh, to UMass. So it's com something you constantly have to be working on, but these credits work. I had a, uh, I had a my nephew uh, did the early college program uh, at Lowell High School. Now it ended up he went to Harvard, uh, so he didn't. We didn't get him at UMass, but he got all his credits at Harvard. So you right. get the credit. Well, let's talk about post-pandemic, uh, the struggle for students taking on the rigors of college work. Um, that's very real. Mental health support, that is something a lot of schools are facing now for their students. Um, how is UMass responding? when it comes to mental health? Um, well, first of all, it, it is a crisis. There's no question about it. The CDC recently did a study that 38% of high school students have identified mental health, behavioral health issues that have affected them uh, personally. And, and so this is a major issue coming out, out, out of COVID. Uh, the state legislature uh, gave us an extra $4 million in the budget uh, last year. We're asking for more. Um, but it's a challenge. Uh, we're using technology, trying to identify students uh, with needs, frankly, trying to identify staff and maybe faculty with needs. This is a major crisis in, in the country. It's particularly a crisis in higher education with students. Uh, when, I, when I went to UMass Lowell, I, I, in the first year I attended two uh, wakes for students who had committed suicide. This is a, was a major issue before COVID. Mm -hmm. You add the strains and stress of COVID, and it's a major issue we're going to have and to deal with. You talk about some of these um, classes that are online that p students can revisit. W what is the benefit in that? 
Well, the benefit, if you can have online classes that are recorded, let's say in a, a subject like physics or calculus, student has a bad day, maybe they stayed out too late or whatever they did, they're in class and, and they're not getting it all as it goes. If they can go to a, a recording and watch that class again, it's kind of the principal of the Khan Institute, mm -hmm. uh, that, that helps because you can't miss a class of Calvary, it's all cumulative. So, uh, you know, it, it has helped increase uh, Calculus 101 students passing and it's really important. We, we train a lot, uh, educate a lot of engineers. If you miss Calculus 101, it could derail your whole career in, in terms of getting an engineering degree. So it's critically important in subjects like physics and calculus.